Hello, my name is Daryl Keel, President of Vacuum Pressing Systems. In this video, I would like to talk about vacuum bags, the different plastics they are made from, and how to choose the right one for your shop. Now, although there are a number of plastics that can be used for vacuum pressing, like silicon, rubber, modified nylon resin film, commonly used in the boat building industry, and even in a pinch, regular polyethylene drop cloth plastic. To mention just a few, these two materials, vinyl and polyurethane, are the preferred choices for vacuum bags in the woodworking shop. So, let's examine why. I look for four primary qualities in a vacuum bag. First and foremost is puncture resistance. Second, flexibility and memory retention. Third, transparency. And fourth is repairability. Vinyl and polyurethane have all four of these qualities, where the other materials I mentioned have only some of them and are usually for more specialty applications like high temperature thermoplastic forming or one-time use. Clearly, of these four qualities, puncture resistance is the most important. How long your bag lasts is all about its toughness. I've set up this simple test to demonstrate puncture resistance. A common ballpoint pen stood up in a block of wood. Here's the vinyl. Decent puncture resistance, but I can get the pen through it. Now let's try this polyurethane. As you can see, polyurethane is extremely tough. I have not gotten this pen through it. Clearly, superior puncture resistance. The other factor to consider in puncture resistance is thickness of the bag, measured in mil or thousands. Vacuum bags for woodworking are generally available in 20 or 30 mil thickness. I only carry and strongly recommend 30 mil as you lose very little in flexibility with the additional 10 mil, but dramatically improve puncture resistance. I can get a pen through this thinner polyurethane. Nothing much is gained at 20 mil except a little cost. Not worth it in my opinion. Let's look at flexibility and memory retention. These two qualities go together. The more flexible the material, the better the memory retention which is the bag's ability to return to its original shape. Although both vinyl and polyurethane are plenty flexible for almost all woodworking applications, there is a difference between the two. Let me fold up and squeeze this piece of vinyl. Then let it go. Comes back slowly. Now this piece of polyurethane. Look at that. It just jumps back to being flat instantly. Here is flexibility in memory retention in an actual bag pressing situation. I have a curved form in a vinyl bag under full vacuum. Undo the closure. And remove this form. Look at this vinyl bag. You can clearly see what was just being pressed it will eventually move back to being flat. This shows medium flexibility and memory retention. Now the same situation with polyurethane. Again, undo the closure and remove the form. Right back to being flat. No memory. Nice flexibility with excellent memory retention. Next is transparency. Both vinyl and polyurethane are pretty much water clear. No advantage one over the other in this department. Lastly is repairability. Again, both vinyl and polyurethane are equally repairable. Wipe down the bag with a little acetone, put on a sticky back patch, or lay down a larger patch with glue and a piece of the bag material. Either way, easily repaired. There is one additional difference between vinyl and polyurethane that's about the heat welded seams. 
A vacuum bag is generally constructed of two sheets welded together along the edges. Vinyl is inherently weak at this heat weld. Taller, flat, or curved work can put pressure on this heat seam. When this happens repeatedly over time, the vinyl thins out and tears right along this joint and can even sometimes peel apart. Polyurethane will never do this, which is why we warranty the seams against this issue. Although both vinyl and polyurethane are mainly intended for room temperature pressing, polyurethane can repeatedly handle temperatures up to 150 degrees and occasionally up to 175 degrees. Vinyl, on the other hand, should be used at basically room temperature, not much above 100 degrees. With all these points in favor of polyurethane, why would anyone consider vinyl? The answer is cost. Yes, polyurethane is superior to vinyl in every way, but it's double the cost or more. I say, if your usage will be occasional and you're a one-person shop, then vinyl may just be fine for you. But if you plan on pressing more regularly, as well as including a fair amount of curved work, then I would seriously consider polyurethane. Or, if you just like having the best. Now, when it comes to polyurethane, there's one more thing to consider. Not all polyurethanes are created equal. Polyurethane film is manufactured through an extruded or blown process. These two films are almost as different as vinyl is to polyurethane, primarily in the area of puncture resistance and to some extent in transparency. Here is the extruded polyurethane, what I have been showing you so far in this video. This is the blown polyurethane. Right away you can see that the blown film is not water clear like the extruded film. It's milky transparent. This is not a major issue and you can usually see through it enough. The real issue is puncture resistance. Let's go back to the puncture test with the pen. Here's the vinyl again. And now here's the extruded polyurethane. Look here is the blown polyurethane. Better than the vinyl, but nowhere near the extruded polyurethane. Clearly it doesn't compare with the extruded film, although it is just as flexible with the same memory retention. What it does have is a better price point. Let's say you're not planning on doing enough pressing to warrant the cost of an extruded polyurethane bag, but like the better properties polyurethane offers. A blown film could be considered midway between vinyl and extruded polyurethane. Something to consider. Just be aware when you're shopping polyurethane bags, whether it's blown or extruded film. You'll know by the lower price point and the milky transparency rather than being water clear. Now, all vacuum bags require some method to seal the end opening as well as an exit port to evacuate the air. This simple two-part closure does the job quite nicely. Fold the bag over the tube and snap on the C-channel closure. Nice tight seal. Our bags have this exit port on the bottom close to the open end so it can hang downward over the edge of the bench. Slide the platen board in the bag with the grooves cut through this sleeve we provided in both directions. Push the brass tube fitting on the hose up through the tapered nipple and into the platen sleeve. The bag and the platen board are now locked together. On longer bags, we provide closures on both ends for access either way. An alternative method for sealing the bag is using a special vacuum proof zipper. This bag opens on three sides, allowing the work to be set in place rather than sliding it in.
This makes getting into and out of the bag very easily, especially for larger panels and cumbersome work. about as good as it gets in a vacuum bag. The only downside to a zipper bag is the premium price. No matter which bag you choose from us, you get a patch kit with two different types of patches. These sticky back patches are for small pinholes, as well as this piece of bag material and a tube of flexible glue for more serious repairs. Also, a few of these platen sleeves for the grooved board you construct and a thorough instruction manual to make the platen board and set up your bag. This brass bag fitting is required to connect the nipple on the bag to a vacuum source. If you already have or are getting one of our pumps, this fitting automatically comes on a hose with the system. If not, then you will need to get this fitting by itself, which fits into 3 8 ID hose. Well, there you have it, an overview of vacuum bags and the two common materials they are made of. I hope this video has assisted you in understanding vacuum bags and making a choice of which bag would be best for your shop and application. As always, feel free to call us anytime if you have questions or need additional information.